I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Many of the incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. I spent nine years living a nightmare called communism, a nightmare from which the awakening is more terrifying than the dream. During those years, I hated communism constantly. And occasionally, I hated you too, mister, because I was afraid you wouldn't recognize the nightmare until you and your wife and kids faced that terrifying awakening. I'm still afraid of that, so take warning from my story. It's a story of communism. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Semitic, Undercover Man. as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked No Second Chance. And it was quite a meeting, Comrade Savetic. You didn't ask me to wait until the others had left just to tell me that, Comrade Harden. <laughs> no. Uh, you have no time for anything except party business, do you, Conrad Svedik? When I joined the party, I put everything else behind me, just as you advised the new members at tonight's cell meeting. Uh, of course. Unfortunately, some members forget that advice. The party knows how to handle those termites. <laughs> yes. Uh, now we've reached the reason for asking you to wait, a matter of uh, termite exterminating... What do you mean, Comrade? I don't know the details. I know only that you have been ordered to Los Angeles to cooperate with the MVD in a matter of termite exterminating. You'll go by train tomorrow. your phone booth man again. Get me? Got you. Go ahead. I'm taking the train to Los Angeles tomorrow. Alone? Yeah. Well, what's the deal? Termite exterminating, they call it. Uh-huh. Who's a termite? No one here knows. I'll find that out in Los Angeles. Okay. We'll pick you up in L.A. Uh, if it turns out that you're the termite, call that Hempstead number we gave you. Right. Good luck. <laughs> It hadn't occurred to me that I might be the termite up for extermination, and I didn't like thinking about it. That kind of thinking drives you nuts. So when this girl sat down beside me in the club car and smiled, I was glad to forget the party's rotten business. If I'd known what that smile was going to cost, I'd have jumped off the train without waiting for it to stop. But I didn't know, and the girl was young and lovely. And when she spoke... I made the mistake of forgetting that a man can never mix romance and undercover work. What do you see that's so interesting? What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. I really don't make a practice of speaking to strangers, but you've been staring out that window so long I couldn't help asking. Oh, uh, I was just thinking. Oh, I'm sorry I disturbed you. I'm not. You've given me something a lot more pleasant to think about. <laughs> Thank you. Are you going clear through to Los Angeles? Yeah. Are you? 
Yes, it's my home. You know, I've often wondered what it would be like to live out there. Oh, it's wonderful. At least it used to be before my parents died. That was five years ago. I haven't been back since. Oh. But you, you still call it home? Yes. My brother still lives in the old house. He's kept everything just the way it was before Mother and Dad died. Mm. Even my room is just the way I left it. Sounds like quite a sentimentalist. You don't approve of sentimentalists? Well, I don't meet many of them in my business. Oh. What business are you in? I'm I'm traveling at the moment. Well, then this is a business trip. Strictly. No pleasure? Ah, uh, no pleasure. Well... We'll have to do something about that. Why don't you phone me just as soon as you finish your business? We'll see the town together. Oh, sounds like a great idea. I'm glad you like it. There's uh, just one tiny flaw in it. What's that? <laughs> we don't know each other's names. <laughs> oh, we were talking so easily, I forgot that we haven't been friends for years. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. I feel very flattered. My name's Matt Sabetic. And I'm Helen Enright. Uh... Would you have dinner with me, Helen? I'd love to, Matt. That's the way it began. No hint of tragedy or a double cross. Just a guy and a gal who were attracted to each other and gave that attraction a chance to develop. And during the several days on the train, it did. The FBI, communism, plots and counterplots, all were pushed to the back of my mind by Helen Enright. And if Helen didn't exactly throw herself at me, she made it plain that the only other man in her life was her brother, Jack. Oh, Jack's several years older than I am, and since Mother and Dad died, he's been wonderful to me. From what you've told me, he's quite a guy. Oh, he is, Matt. I'm terribly anxious to have you two like each other. Well, you won't have to worry about me. Because if he's your brother, I like him. Even if I hate him. <laughs> oh, I don't think anyone could ever hate him. Any more than they could hate you. <laughs> Did I say something funny? Yes, very. What was it? We'll talk about it some other time. Mm -hmm. Right now, we better get our things together. We'll be in Los Angeles pretty soon. Our baggage collected, Helen and I sat silently holding hands as our train moved slowly through the Los Angeles yards and into the Union Station. And before I'd helped her to the platform, I'd almost decided that this termite exterminating mission would be my last job for either the party or the FBI. Then, hand in hand, Helen and I walked up the ramp to meet her brother. There he is! There he is, Matt! The tall brunette in the gray sports jacket. Jack! Jack! Here! Oh, hurry, Matt! Hurry! Coming! Oh, Jack! Helen. Oh, you... oh, you look wonderful, sis. Oh, you look even more wonderful, Jack, doesn't he, Matt? Well, he looks good, but frankly, you're more my type. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Jack, I'm anxious to have you meet Matt Sabetti. Well, judging from sis's attitude, I'd better be happy to know you. Well, I hope you are, Jack. I'm sure I am. You, uh, live in L.A.? No. Well, come on out to the house for lunch. We'll talk it over. Oh, thanks, but uh, I have to finish this job first. When when will I... <laughs> when will we see you, Matt? The very first second I'm free. I hope it won't be too long. I'll make sure that it isn't, Helen. Give us a call just as soon as you can, Matt. You'll find us in the phone book under Jack Enright. Helen and Jack Enright had just passed out of sight when the comrade stepped up and tapped me on the shoulder. At that moment, I was grateful for their waiting until I was alone. Later, well, after they'd identified themselves, we got into their car and drove to a house on Alvarado, where they gave me my orders. This is a delicate mission, Comrade Svedink. There must be no bungling. If you don't think I can handle the job... We think you can handle it perfectly. It was just a warning. What's the job? I like your zealous attitude, Comrade Zvetti. Thanks. We suspect a local high-ranking party member of traitorous activities. This situation is peculiar in that the party member in question has powerful friends back east, members of the Central Committee. We must have absolute proof of his aiding the enemy before we can exert any discipline. Who is the suspect? He's known in the party as Comrade Green. His real name is Jack Enright. Jack Enright? I just met a man named Jack Enright. That's your man, Comrade Spedink. 
We know that he intends to leave the party, that he's engaged in activities detrimental to party interests. Your job is to prove what we know. But how am I supposed to get close enough to Enright to get this proof? You're going to be his house guest. House guest? Party members often stay at Enright's to save expenses. The arrangements have been made. Oh, well, but if, if he knows that I'm a party member, how can I get any information against him? Enright's sister should be able to furnish you with all the proof we need. And judging from the way she was playing up to you at the station, you shouldn't have any difficulty, comrade. Well, what's she going to think about me being her brother's house guest when she knows he just met me? <laughs> Enright will be told to explain that you phoned the house and he learned that you're a fraternity brother. <laughs> Naturally, he invited you to stay with him. <laughs> Have you ever dreamed you were walking down the street without clothes and unable to run or hide yourself? Well, that's the way I felt when I got out of the cab and walked up to the Enright's house. Ashamed, embarrassed, and dirty. And feeling that way, I had to pretend that I was happy to be there. And for Helen's sake, Jack played his part, too. Just put your bags down over there, Matt. Why don't you let Matt sit down and have a drink, Helen, while you go up and make sure that his room is ready, hmm? All right, Jack, but... Don't try to trap Matt into spending all his time talking about fraternity matters. You remember I saw him first. <laughs> I'll remember. There's something you should remember, too, Svetik. Yes? Yeah. This isn't a threat. It's a statement of absolute fact. Stay away from my sister, or I'll kill you. Later in the day, I reported the conversation to the MVD. They weren't exactly sympathetic. There's a strong possibility that Enright meant exactly what he said, Comrade Spedding. Then what do I do? Follow orders. We must have an airtight case against Enright. And the only way to get it is through the girl. But suppose I can't get the information from Helen from the girl. That would be very unfortunate for you, Comrade. Enright has threatened to kill you in the presence of reliable witnesses. What witnesses? They can be produced. In the unlikely event that you fail to secure the required information, other witnesses will testify that they saw Enright kill you. Enright doesn't seem to have much chance. None. <laughs> you were sent here to help us eliminate him, Comrade Svedig. And you will accomplish your mission. Alive or dead. <laughs> to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sabetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. Alive or dead, you'll accomplish your mission, alive or dead. Those words of the MVD goon were beating a tattoo in my brain as I headed back to Enright. Then, while I stood waiting for a bus... A car pulled up beside me, and the driver said, I'm going your way, wherever you're headed. Get in. I got in, and the car moved out into traffic. It was my FBI contact. I told him about the spot I was in and asked for his advice. Well, I can't give you advice, Matt. I can only give you orders. What are they? Get all the information possible on Jack Enright. Maybe he's quitting the Reds, and maybe he isn't. What do you know about him? Well, we know he has lines reaching back to the Central Committee, maybe even further. His party connections are so solid that he may have orders to go underground, unknown to the local goons. But he didn't warn me to stay away from his sister until after he learned that I was a commie. Why would he do that if he only intends going underground? I've given up trying to understand any American mind that can accept communism, Matt. It could be any one of a dozen reasons, none of which would make sense to you or me. You... 
You still want me to play up to Helen, his sister? She seems to be in right to one week spot. Okay. But I'll never feel clean again. This was the lowest moment I'd ever spent as a communist for the FBI. If Helen had been a red herself, I'd have had no compunctions about trapping her in any way possible. But she wasn't a red. She was sweet and innocent and naive. And for some reason, she went for me. Convincing her that she was in love with me was the easiest and the lousiest assignment I ever had. Jack's gone now, Matt. Be right with you, baby. I don't know why we have to be so secretive when Jack's around. I, uh, I guess I'm, I'm a little self-conscious because we're oh, fraternity brothers. I don't follow that at all. Let's talk about something else, Matt. What, for instance? Us, for instance. Should I tell you how I smile whenever I think of you? I know the feeling, Matt. And how a room lights up for me when you walk into it. Oh, Matt, I love you. And I love you, Ellen. Hold me closer, Matt. Oh, darling. Oh, my poor, poor darling. Why do you say that? I, I don't really know. I wonder. Wonder about what? If you've just been pretending, trying to be kind. I certainly haven't tried to be kind. That must be why we've always waited until Jack left the house. What are you talking about? My brother. It's because of my brother that you can never really love me. But I do love you, Helen. In spite of your brother. In spite of my brother? In spite of anything. Then you know. No. No what? My brother, Jack, is a communist. Oh, Helen. You don't know what you're saying. You don't know who you're talking to. I do know what I'm saying, Matt. I'm saying that my brother is a communist, an enemy of my country and my people. And I know who I'm talking to. You do? Who? The man I love. The only person in the world I can turn to. I should have been very proud of myself right then. I'd managed to make Helen Enright fall in love with me just the way I'd been ordered to. There was just one small fly in the butter. I was in love with Helen Enright, too. FBI, MVD, patriotism, communism, my love for Helen all whirling in my brain. But in any case, it was still my job to get the information against her brother. And the next day, Helen dropped that information right into my lap. Matt! Matt, darling! Be right with you, Helen. Well, I take it that Jack has left. About five minutes ago. And you're just letting me know? <laughs> Who's the new man in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Matt's medic. <laughs> and I didn't call you sooner because I was reading something. Something very important to us. Oh, did someone leave us a million dollars in his will or something? <laughs> Much more important than that. Two millions. <laughs> Jack is quitting the Communist Party. Are you sure, Helen? Positive, Matt. Oh, darling, now there's nothing in the world to interfere with our happiness. Nothing in the world to interfere with our happiness. Nothing but the FBI, the stinking Communist Party, and me, Matt Savannah. Because I loved Helen, I didn't run to the MVD with my information. I didn't have to. They picked me up on the street while I was out walking, trying to think things through. And in the house on Alvarado, they put the pressure on. You're taking much too long on this assignment, Comrade Svetik. It isn't easy to get the information we want without tipping my hand. Particularly if you're not too anxious to get that information, eh, Comrade? What do you mean? If you were weak enough, foolish enough to think that you were in love with Helen Enright, you might try to protect your brother. Now, just a second. If I'm going to do this job, I'm going to do it my way. That takes time. You have no more time, Comrade Svetik. You'll deliver the information against Enright tomorrow afternoon. And if I can't? Tomorrow evening, the local police will arrest Enright for your murder. After that pleasant little conversation, I went to a public phone and called the Hempstead emergency number. The FBI arranged to pick me up. Mm. 
Get in, Matt. You sounded a little disturbed. What's up? I got the information on Enright. Yeah? He's quitting the party. Oh, we know that. You do? He's going underground. No, no, no. He's really quitting. He told his sister. We've had other information from New York, Matt. Enright is going underground. But the MVD is really putting the heat on me for information against him. Enright's party orders are apparently top secret. The local goons don't know about it. If they want information against him, give it to them. What? If these guys get a little overzealous and give Enright a working over, the Central Committee is going to be very unhappy. Someone will come out and work over these guys. Yeah, well, I like that idea. There's just one thing wrong. What's that? I'm in love with Enright's sister. That makes it tough. How can I turn in her brother and ever face her again? I love Helen. I want to marry her and settle down. I don't blame you a bit, Matt. But uh, knowing what you know, could you do that before you finish your job? Beating the Reds isn't all my responsibility. Of course it isn't, Matt. You could quit right now and no one could blame you. No one would blame you. Except maybe Matt Stratic. I hated the FBI right then. Yes, and I hated my country, too. I hated everything that stood between me and Helen. Most of all, I hated communism. Because I realized that until communism was destroyed, there could be no love or hope or security for people like Helen and me. I went back to see Helen once more before making my final decision. You were gone a long time, Matt. It must have been awfully important business. I guess you could call it that. Well, I feel pretty important, too. You're pretty important to me. Well, I'll be even more important when you see this. What is it? A paper with a list of names. I found it while I was cleaning Jack's room. It had fallen behind his dresser. Here, let me see it. Of course. See? It says, underground contacts, memorize and destroy. Yeah. Jack doesn't know you found this. Oh, of course not, Sally. He hasn't been home. Well, don't mention it to him. Why not? Well, it, it might upset him if he knew that someone else had this information. Let me hold you close, Helen. Oh, darling. Oh, I love you so much. And I love you, darling. I've never felt this way about anyone before. And I never will again. You better not. After we're married, if you so much as look at another girl, I'll... Oh, you better forget about marrying me, Helen. Forget? Matt, what have I done? What's wrong? You haven't done anything, darling. It's, it's just that... Well, last night... Yes, Matt? I, I lay awake for a long time, thinking about us, Helen. Thinking about how much I love you, how much I want you. And deciding that you wouldn't marry me. Not that I... I wouldn't marry you, Dad. That I couldn't. That I, that I couldn't change my way of life. Not at this time. I'm, I, I'm going away. Then you... You don't love me. That's the reason you're leaving me. I'm... I'm leaving you. Because I do love you, Helen. I will as long as I live. Kiss me goodbye. <laughs> After making a copy of Enright's list of underground contacts, I gave it to the MVD, together with Helen's statement that Jack Enright was quitting the party. This is all the proof we need, Comrade Svetik. Congratulations. Congratulations. You just played Judas Iscariot to the brother of the girl you love. I made contact with the FBI and turned over the original list of communist names. Then I bought a ticket home. I was sitting in a little restaurant that night when my FBI contact sat down beside me. Congratulations, Matt. That list is invaluable. What happened to Jack Enright? He's definitely through with the Reds. The MVD goons beat him up badly before we could get there. Then they wired New York, bragging about it. New York isn't going to be happy with these guys. What about Helen? She took it big, Matt. She loved her brother. Her brother and you. (laughs) 
Helen called for me, and I couldn't answer. Then or ever again. If I didn't know it before, I realized then that you can't mix a woman and undercover work. At least, not a woman you love. Of course, there are women in the party, women who are interested in other party members. But I've known Helen, and I choose to walk alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews. Although the struggle between freedom and communism hasn't flared into open battle here in the Western Hemisphere, the enemies of freedom never stop their efforts to destroy it. Although to protect innocent persons, the names, dates, and places in this story are fictitious, the danger they warn against is very real. Next week, we'll bring you another strange adventure based on the fantastic experiences of Matt Svedek. Join us, won't you? Mm-hmm.